broad overview uh, over complementary and alternative medicine, Professor Ernst is the one to ask. He has been a uh, professor of, uh, he set up his department of complementary and alternative medicine in Exeter University in 1993, and he has been a professor there until 2011. He has written eight books on the subject. He uh, is the founder of the medical journal Focus on Alternative and uh, Complementary uh, Therapies. And we have asked him to give an overview uh, from a European perspective. Professor Ernst. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this session dedicated to the memory of my friend Wim Betts, um, um, who was not just my friend, but a shining light of integrity and skepticism. You invited me to uh, give a lecture on the battle against so-called alternative medicine. Are we winning? When I got the invitation, I was delighted um, and accepted and I thought, this is easy. Um, then I started preparing a few weeks ago and found out it's not at all easy. So uh, please bear with me. Uh, OK, um, this is what I intend to do. I'm going to give you a little bit of background. I'm going to explain the acronym SCAM. Then I'm going to talk about major defeats, major victories, come to a conclusion and suggest something for the future. By way of background, uh, that's me, uh, my life in 15 bullet points. Um, I suppose what is important is that I, I studied medicine and my very first job was at the only homeopathic hospital at the time in, in Germany. There I learned to not, not just to practice homeopathy, I learned to think like a homeopath, and I learned all sorts of other alternative techniques. Then um, I became a proper doctor uh, and even a scientist. I made a PhD, I returned into, back into uh, clinical medicine, became professor first in Hanover and Vienna of rehabilitation medicine. And in 1993, I took over the chair of complementary medicine at Exeter. I uh, am now retired and um, spent my time writing a blog, which I come back to in a second. Um, conflicts of interest. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, somebody uh, tweeted that and, and said, I owe him an explanation. I suppose I do, uh, but I would, I would wish who this Professor Ernst is. I, I wish him good luck to, to earn money on, in my name, but I can assure you he has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I do not have conflicts of interest. So why do I call it scam in, in recent years? Uh, why, why not just alternative medicine like anybody else? Um, the reasons are simple. Uh, um, if a therapy does work, it's not an alternative. It's, uh, it's, it's real um, medicine. And if it does not work, it's also not an alternative. Um, certainly not an alternative. So uh, these are the reasons, and, and the main reason is, of course, that I published a book with that title, which you all are going to rush out and buy now. Um, the million dollar question, are we winning? And that's actually a difficult question. I, I could have said um, yes uh, and gone home, or I could have said no and gone home. Uh, how do I address how do I address that question? That's what I, after some um, uh, contemplation, uh, tried to do, uh, sort of semi-systematic. Um, I 
I'm, I'm trying to, to, to see how, how many victories and defeats we, we have experienced in, in recent years, uh, to be exact, in the last uh, uh, 12 months. Um, and I'm focusing on major events which are in, in, of general importance. This is a European con uh, conference, so I'm focusing on general e events which are important Europe-wide. Um, and uh, where do I take these events from? Uh, I'm an old man, my memory doesn't stretch that far, not even 12 months. I looked in my, into my own blog. Uh, almost every day I write about what is happening in alternative medicine. And uh, what I found on, on, this, on this blog in the last 12 months, I, I considered for inclusion into this talk. So you may think it's uh, systematic, but it's really not. Um, examples of defeats. Defeat number one, uh, and that's the most recent one. Um, the, the, um, just a couple of weeks ago, it was announced that there will be a new chair of anthroposophical medicine at the University of Basel. Uh, in, in principle, that is not necessarily that bad. Uh, but what makes it quite bad, it's called uh, trans translationale complementaire medicine. I'm not even sure what that means. Um, contractually, the chair is bound to adhere to the anthroposophical model. I'm not sure what that means. It's financed uh, by three million Swiss francs. That, that's pretty good. Uh, um, money donated by anthroposophical organizations like the commercial uh, firm Velida. And going to be appointed, or meanwhile even appointed, is Professor Gundemann, who has a track record of uh, uh, researching anthroposophical issues. So I consider that a, a, a major defeat if at one of our universities uh, in Europe we, ha we have a chair in anthroposophical medicine, basically. Defeat number two. Uh, my old friend, Prince Charles, becomes patron of the UK Faculty of Homeopathy. The UK Faculty of Homeopathy is the professional organization of Dr. Homeopaths in Britain. Um, you may have heard that uh, in, in Britain, the NHS stopped supporting homeopathy. It, it's not, no longer um, reimbursed through the NHS. That happened uh, outside the reporting period, so it, it w w will not otherwise appear. And Prince Charles is a major supporter, the, the, the most important supporter of homeopathy in Britain. And as an as a act of, I'm, I'm not sure, of stupidity or defiance, he decided to become patron of the UK faculty. Prince Charles, of course, has a long history of uh, supporting alternative medicine. Here are some uh, quotes from uh, the recent and not so recent past uh, by him. Uh, I, I just alert you to the, the third one. Homeopathic remedies also work in animals which are surely unlikely to be influenced by the placebo effect. My God. <laughs> I don't think I need to comment on that. Um, Defeat number three. Uh, that was already mentioned by uh, Dr. Aus this morning. German homeopathic firm sends de desist letters to critics. That's a, quite, quite an in interesting story. Um, and Dr. Aust ha has explained to you that uh, at least two critics received these letters, uh, legal letters, um, telling them they must no longer ever state that, uh, state publicly that uh, homeopathy doesn't work uh, beyond placebo. If not, they will have to pay each time they do that 5,100 uh, uh, euros penalty. And um, in an interview, Mr. Hevert, the, the uh, 
uh, uh, owner of the, this firm, said this was necessary because he saw that in England uh, people had more or less forced the, the government uh, to, to um, uh, no longer reimburse homeopathy because of uh, uh, peddling un untruths about homeopathy and, and, and so forth. And therefore, he thought this was uh, necessary to take these steps in, in Germany to prevent anything like this happening in, in Germany. I think if uh, the legal situation is such that um, firms can uh, basically silence critics of homeopathy who not even have mentioned the firm uh, ever before, uh, um, this must be counted as a major defeat. Defeat number five, um, in October uh, 2018, the new chair, a new chair was created, again, at a university, uh, uh, this time a German university, uh, the chair of naturopathy and integrated medicine. This is called the Lehrstuhl für Naturheilkunde und Integrative Medizin, chair for naturopathy and integrative medicine. Um, it will focus on oncology um, and in terms of alternative treatments, it will focus on nutrition, probiotics and acupuncture. It will exclude homeopathy and anthroposophical medicine and it's financed for five years from uh, the Robert Bosch Stiftung which has in the past had a lot of interest, in, uh, strangely enough, in homeopathy. So, two chairs, uh, each, of when, e each of them uh, at uh, important universities in Europe, and I think, uh, therefore, defeats. The fifth defeat, probably the most important one. This is the World Health Organization. They announced that their new international classification of diseases will in future include diagnoses used by TCM practitioners. These are diagnoses like qi deficiency, uh, yin and yang imbalance, and, and that sort of nonsense, which has never been validated and which are not real diagnoses. The WHO of course, as you probably know, has a long history in so-called alternative medicine. And in 2003, they published a consensus document on acupuncture. What you see here in red on the right are all the diagnoses for which that document says acupuncture is a proven uh, treatment. Um, quite astounding. In 2005, they tried to, to publish a document on homeopathy um, in which homeopathy was advocated for serious diseases, including malaria. Uh, I, at the time, was asked to comment on, on a pre-publication document, and I managed to prevent uh, the publication of the document. The, the WHO never published that document, but they were extremely close to publishing it. Um, in 2005, the WHO even g gave me money, um, not me personally, my department, um, to make a, a systematic review of all cost evaluations in so-called al al alternative medicine. I did that. Um, it didn't come out very positive for alternative medicine, for SCAM. Um, I delivered the document and they never published it. Um, in 2006, they invited the Prince, uh, Prince Charles, my good friend, uh, to the General Assembly and he used uh, the General Assembly to uh, advocate what he calls integrated medicine. And um, 
the last, they had, the WHO published a series of um, strategy documents on what they call traditional medicine. <clears throat> and the current one, covering the period of 2014 to 2023, um, uh, states in, in, in the preface of the document that it is to boost the global integration of traditional and complementary medicine. And in the, in the footnote, I found a little uh, um, remark or, or thank you that the, public, uh, uh, the People's Republic of China uh, is, is, is uh, thanked for financial support. Uh, so, that to me indicates that uh, the, when it comes to scam, <clears throat> the WHO is sadly, I'm hesitant to say that, but a very dubious organization. I know that in, in uh, virtually all other areas it is a highly uh, recognized and well-established organization and I want to focus on uh, my criticism exclusively to the area of scam. Right, um, now we are sufficiently depressed and need some victories. Victory number one, uh, that's the last one and I'm sure you've all heard of it. Uh, France stops the reimbursement of homeopathy. That, I thought, was brilliant, uh, not only because uh, of, of the fact, but also the way it was done. Um, a, a group of physicians uh, published an open letter uh, in Le Figaro, uh, criticizing uh, the fact that homeopathy is still being reimbursed in France, and because there's no evidence for it, and it's uh, money uh, wasted. This put the health minister under pressure, and what I thought was a brilliant move, she said, we have an institution that looks at these things. I will give it to this institution. They are scientists. They will, will look at it. They will evaluate homeopathy, and I will abide by their judgment. The judgment came out uh, squarely negative, that had to be expected, and the health minister, who ever since is my personal hero, uh, said I have always uh, abided by that uh, our uh, higher authority and therefore I decided to uh, start the de-reimbursement of homeopathy. Victory number two, a position statement published by the Spanish Association of Pediatrics Medicine Commission on Scam for Children. The statement uh, is much longer, of course. I, I, I show you two short passages. Um, no health professional should recommend treatments to the support uh, uh, treatments not supported by scientific evidence. Professional associations should sanction those health professionals who promote the use of scam. It can be that simple. Victory number three. Again, the Spanish, this time the Spanish health ministry want to change EU laws that classifies homeopathy as medicine. That has already been mentioned this morning. Um, the Spanish health minister said, and this is the quote, the problem is the damage that can be done by opting for an alternative therapy that has no scientific evidence. Again, very, very simple, very effective, and I hope that uh, uh, on, on the European level they have success. Victory number four. In May 2019, Facebook joins the fight against quackery. 
that has received remarkably little international attention, but the Facebook product manager made two ranking updates to reduce posts that exagger exaggerated or sensationalized health claims and posts attempting to sell products or services based on health-related claims. So a step in the right direction. I'm not sure whether and how this is going to be effective, but if it's on international platforms like uh, Facebook and YouTube, uh, it sh surely must be a step in the right direction. Again, in academia, victory number five, November 2018, the end of homeopathy at the medical school in Vienna. This is close to my heart because I was a professor in, in, in Vienna for four years. And it relates to a personal story, actually. The students, no, not the university, but the medical students of, of the medical school in Vienna about four years ago invited me to a lecture. I was most uh, amazed. I had had no previous contact with them, and I came there and gave the lecture. The students were present, uh, uh, as far as I could see. Not a single professor was, was present, not, certainly not the one that I'm going to talk about uh, in, a, in a second. So they, they were uh, listening to what I had to say about homeopathy, and a little while later they started an in initiative and complained to the medical dean about the, the course uh, that was offered to them. This is a course offered, that was a course offered by Professor Michael Fraas, who has all sorts of uh, um, recognition in the world of, of homeopathy, who's an uh, intensive care physician, apparently a very good one, um, uh, and who has, just shortly after I left uh, the faculty of Vienna, started um, an outpatient clinic unit um, of homeopathy in, would you believe it, in malign diseases. Uh, very unusual, and, and shortly after he started his lecture series uh, on homeopathy. Um, so the students complained about this, and they, they, they said there is no evidence for homeopathy, and why is, is that uh, being offered to us, and why is it offered to us in that fashion? Because it was clearly a course promoting homeopathy, not critically analyzing the evidence. The dean looked at it, he gave it to the ethical committee of the university, and the dean said, the medical faculty rejects unscientific method and quackery, and they scrapped the course completely and, and the clinic um, and they started a new course, and th th this is really, I think, m quite marvelous, um, uh, run by a pharmacologist to critically analyze all sorts of uh, alternative medicines. And they recently had, had their, their, their first meeting celebrating what the students were doing in that course. They invited me to give a keynote lecture, and I was most impressed. Uh, I think this is really quite a beautiful victory. Victory number six, September 2018, Lille Medical School suspends homeopathy degree. Very briefly, uh, the dean said, we insist on absolute scientific rigor. Homeopathy is a doctrine that has remained on the margins of the scientific movement. Continuing to teach it would be to endorse it. Simple. Victory number seven, um, ha hardly noticed uh, internationally, the World Congress uh, in, in September 2018, the World Congress of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Society, uh, Sciences ruled on homeopathy. They had a session 
where they, they put it uh, to the audience to uh, uh, say, should pharmacists s sell uh, homeopathic remedies or shouldn't they? It, it's a long-standing discussion amongst, amongst uh, uh, the, the pharmaceutical profession and this is what they said in the ruling, pharmacists should not sell or dispense homeopathic products. Quite breathtaking, really, if, if, you, if you go out into any pharmacy in, in Europe, you will see these, pharm these homeopathic products, yet their ruling body has said they should not do that. It's, it's not a, a binding, it's not a binding ruling that compels them to do that, but it's setting the right direction for the profession and it's hugely important, I think, that this profession gets it right because this is where the stuff is being sold very often without uh, any uh, consent doing advice of medical professionals. So, are we winning? These were all the defeats and all the victories that I did find on my own website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it, I, I think it's, an, uh, it's very nice that you applaud it and, and uh, it's also my sentiment, of course. But of course we are not winning. We are, we are, we are fighting against uh, the increasing popularity and, and uh, this slide shows you that in 2019 we are spending globally about 80 billion uh, uh, US dollars on alternative medicine sales. And the prediction is not that this is going to decline. The prediction is that in, in quite a short while, this is going to double yet again. And what we really need <laughs> to be winning <laughs> is something like that. My conclusions. The battle against CAM is surely intriguing. It, it's something that uh, makes me write a blog almost every day. Um, intriguing is uh, really a British understatement. Um, yet, it is simply not winnable. The battle against scum, I think, should be reframed. Uh, fighting against something has a connotation of being negative. We ought to become it ought to become a struggle for progress in healthcare. So here are my suggestions for the future. Uh, I've already said it, take a positive and constructive approach. Uh, as I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but as, as skeptics, we are, we are very often see, seen to be weirdos. Uh, we, we, we should focus on the best interests of the patient, of the consumers. We should really stress this much more uh, when it comes to our skepticism in, uh, against scam. We should involve the public and the patients more. Uh, we should get the medical profession involved. Uh, medical students uh, must get involved. It is the, the, they are the future in, in, in medicine. We must secure support of journalists who, as I just said, do quite often see, see us as nerds and weirdos. Uh, we must become more active on the political level because this is where many of the decisions are being made. We need money. Our opponents are swimming in money, and we are fighting this battle on a shoestring. Uh, it, it's not winnable on a shoestring. 
and we can't expect miracles. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for a very interesting uh, presentation. There must be questions in the audience. Who wants to ask a question? Amadeo first. Okay, I see that there are basically two issues uh, that, that are very disturbing. One is the, uh, that still many universities uh, are teaching pseudoscience, pseudomedicine of all kinds. Uh, and the other one that is getting political recognition at all, all levels. So if you just take out one, I just take out WHO also thinking of, uh, um, thinking of Wim Betts who had made some very strong statements about uh, the WHO. Is this, what can we do? international organizations around the world, um, because that's yet another level to change anything. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I knew I had all the answers. So, uh, with the WHO, I think part of the problem was Margaret Chan. Uh, I've met her twice, personally. She, she, she is a... a, a a sworn proponent of traditional Chinese medicine. She has a dual citizenship and she, she, she ran first an, an office for traditional medicine and then became uh, a chief executive of, uh, I'm, I'm sure they call, call it differently, president or whatever, of the WHO. So for, for almost a decade, she was running the show, uh, not, not just th that little office, but the WHO, and she was, uh, she was instrumental in this very pro-TCM approach that, that uh, uh, WHO took. Uh, she's no longer in, in office, and therefore part of the problem may, might have been solved. And part of what we're seeing now, like, like, like the int integration of the diagnostic criteria, uh, may be still her work that is overlapping. Um, and um, what can we do against that? Uh, when I first learned about it, I tried to get the Americans on board to, to uh, get an international protest against it to prevent it, because at the time it was still preventable. It just didn't materialize. Uh, 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 in, in America, they have other problems. They, they have an idiot as a president and, and, and probably cannot even focus on, the, on, on TCM anymore. But um, I'm, I'm just speechless that they can have a, a, a worldwide accepted document of diagnosis and include TCM into that without an outcry of the skeptics community, uh, not even just the skeptics community, of the medical uh, community, not even just the medical community, the science community. Uh, so what can we do? Well, open our mouths. Another question. There's a gentleman over here. Um, one of your suggestions for the future is raise money. So my question is, suppose you raise a million euro from a philanthropist, what would you spend the money on to have the biggest impact in this fight against uh, Well, I, I, I think this morning, this morning we, we heard an absolutely brilliant example of what he can do, even with very little money. And I don't know uh, where our little money comes from, but you, 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 uh, you, you need to bring together a group of people, focus on, on, on uh, some strategy, and go for it. Uh, I can't say much more than that. Okay. Uh, Johan Brackman in the back. Thank you. 
There are some other possibilities, of course, to, to look at the question whether we are winning or losing the battle. Like, for instance, um, is the, um, the number of people using so-called alternative, alternative medicine uh, going up or down? Or um, another question, um, do uh, people who produce so-called alternative medicine uh, do they make more or less money in the companies that produce uh, the, the, the medicine and so on. So from, from these perspectives, do you have any statistics or, or more in detail that, that could inform us or about winning or losing? Well, I, I, I think this, this is why I sh showed you this graph. I, I, I think that graph encapsulates both, both your questions. The, the sales figures couldn't, couldn't not, not possibly go up if uh, the number of people using it was going down. It's also going up. And, yeah. and the profits of the firms selling that stuff couldn't go down if the sales figures go up. So, so I, I, I think from, from those two perspectives, we are not winning. And, and this is why I chose a different approach and more interesting approach to analyze what is happening. Uh, be, because if, if you look at just as, as, as prevalence figures, usage, uh, it doesn't look good. And do you have any idea whether, maybe it's hard to calculate or estimate, whether the amount of uh, different alternative medicines uh, in vogue nowadays is going up or down? Because this number changes, of course, every decade, say. We, 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 we've seen this morning figures that in Germany homeopathy is going down, uh, albeit very slightly. Um, these, these figures are different for, for every country. They are very much dependent on flavor of the months, uh, on what uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is uh, thinking about. That sort of thing. Uh, so it's, it is almost futile to, to have a closer look at, at that because it's, it, it is a, a melting pot of unbelievable nonsense. Uh, and and uh, it is very unappetizing to go into that, <laughs> I find. Yes, in, in medicine Thank we you. register everything. In so-called alternative medicine, nothing is registered. Uh, one hype after another. If you try to keep up, you can't. Uh, and and, and uh, these people are badly organized and have no societies where there are numbers where you can rely on. So that's going to be difficult forever, I think. And then there's a question over there, a lady. No, just wait a moment. If it's not, if, if it's not, not, it's it's not registered on the tape, if you don't use the microphone, it's coming. Thank you uh, for your presentation. I appreciate it specifically your comment, your conclusions, and I presume that uh, you, those conclusions are directed to the skeptics community. Um, and one of your com uh, conclusions was that the battle against complementary and alternative medicine should be reframed as a struggle for progress, which I agree with, but I see in the skeptics community um, that these, these conclusions don't seem clear by and large, and there's still a lot of debunking going on on YouTube uh, of, of crystal healers to acupuncture, um, which can be important. But my question is, um, how should this shift happen in the skeptics community? Um, what would be your advice for the community as a whole? Hmm. I, I, it, it's, it's a good question, but um, if, I, if I knew the answer, I wouldn't have struggled with that subject since 25 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid um, I have some clever conclusions, but very few answers. I, 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 th I think, as far as the skeptical community is, is, is concerned, 
uh, we have to, to be seen to be for something. Uh, and very often it's just phraseology, because we are f definitely for something. I, I know that. Uh, well, I am for something, um, at least. Um, so it's, it's just a question of how we present ourselves, how we give in interviews, how we write articles. It's a start, and then we take it from there. But as, as I say, I don't have the answers. Okay, there's a question over there. It's more a, a remark. Uh, you mentioned the uh, decision of the French government about homeopathy as a victory. As a Frenchman, I would rather say, let's wait and see what comes next, because I'm so confident, but hope is nevertheless uh, permitted. Yes, uh, uh, that's a very nice comment. I, I live uh, these days, mo most of my time in, in France. My, my wife is French, and, and I consider myself demi-francais. <laughs> so, uh, what is coming next? What came next was, was a violent protest organized by Boiron, uh, the, the uh, uh, largest producer of homeopathics in the world, uh, who said we are going to lose uh, 100,000 jobs, blah, 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 this, this sort of thing. They went to the street and, and so forth. And, uh, and uh, President Macron even hesitated, apparently. Uh, uh, and uh, the health minister had apparently had to put her foot down and say, no, we are uh, de, uh, de reimbursing homeopathy, and she did. Uh, so that's why I said, she, at present she's my hero, let's just hope she remains my hero. <laughs> We have time for more questions, uh, yes. Amadeo. Yes, yes. One, one last question. Looking at this graph uh, and looking back at a presentation by Hans Rosling uh, six years ago saying that more and more people are being lifted off poverty and, and considering that maybe 200, uh, not quite, maybe 150 years ago, uh, quackery was mainly something that was good for princes and for, for those who are at that, that level of uh, income. Is this perhaps also the more people can afford bullshit and they don't really have any uh, more real problems that that's why these numbers are going up? Is that perhaps one explanation? Yes, that is, definitely is one. Uh, look at, look at the, our royal family. Um, uh, with the other half, I'm, I'm British, so I say my royal family. Uh, uh, they promote uh, homeopathy uh, whenever they can. And when they're ill, they go to the best doctors in the country. <laughs> okay, is there another question? Well, just to comment on this, we had an article in a Dutch newspaper recently uh, that, uh, from a GP, from a family physician, who said, it's especially the poor people in my practice who seem to spend a lot of money on uh, well, alternative treatments, uh, vitamins, supplements, and, and nonsense treatments. So, um, it's not only the rich, it's also the poor. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I don't know that GP, I don't know, I, I have no reason to doubt his experience, but his experience goes against all the data. Uh, it, is, it is the affluent uh, the, and strangely enough, the well-educated, middle-aged female who typically buys uh, that stuff. Uh, and, and that is confirmed by, by not one GP, by, by, by about 500 surveys. Okay, Claire has another question. Here that we have to... Be completely oh. finished at six because then security comes to close it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> last. This is the last question. Uh, Short, please. Just, uh, just a quick comment. Fifty-four percent of anti-vaxxers are men, uh, so we don't just w la w tell, say that women are the ones buying all of this. But when it comes to the uh, people that are on the, uh, po uh, poor or don't are not middle class buying alternative treatments, it's common because they are more easily easily exploited. 
they are uh, they are already in a more desperate situation and they're e more easily fall for these kinds of things of course the biggest buyers are the people who are affluent but it's uh, not unusual for the people who don't have money to be caught in such a scam either yeah sure it's 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 not a abrupt cutoff it it, it it is a frequency distribution and 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 you you're right i i didn't mean to attack women but uh, on, on that score, certain, certainly didn't want to do that. Uh, the, the, the surveys show that women um, predominantly buy that stuff. Why? Because it's also the women who buy the aspirin, the, uh, the paracetamol, and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's the women who who, do the who who look after the health of the family. It's the men who buy the whiskey. Okay, um, well, I have to so, uh, close yep. the session because otherwise we are locked in or thrown out. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very thank much, you. Professor Ernst.